Hi, welcome to the 3D Pen Den. You just got one of these 3D pens and looked around on the internet for some help. And most likely saw the making of this cube and ads claiming you can now draw in the air. If you tried it and found it challenging, you may ask yourself, is it really possible to draw in the air? The short answer is yes and no. It depends what it is that you are trying to draw in the air and how. So let's look into it. This part is quite easy even though you have to sit there motionless and steady for about 15 seconds after each line, waiting for it to solidify, which all the videos, including mine, discreetly edit out. The hard part is that the results are quite wiggly and it's super challenging to attach anything to a moving point. So watch what happens when I try to connect the two uprights. No matter how steady your hand gets with practice, there is a lot of movement just from the stream of plastic coming from the pen hitting the unsupported points. It is hard to attach things to a moving target. Remember from the first part of this video, stability is the third S for success. Plus, often you get these sagging lines because there is such a thing as gravity. Working on flat 2D plane is easier. And if you plan your strategy well, you can often finish the whole thing on a solid flat plane. So does that mean that we don't get to draw in space at all? It looks like fun and it is what these pens are designed to do best. So it would be a shame not to use it. We just need to find a way to make this process easier. So let's look at our options. The reason it is easiest to draw on a flat 2D plane is that all the points on it are 100% stable and supported against gravity. As opposed to up here in the 3D space above, we have a zero supported points and we need at least one to help us make this jump into the third dimension. I can hold a stick up and create a supported point even though doing it this way still means I have to rely on having a super steady hand. Set of steady points that I don't have to hold would be way better. If I stick a vertical wire in the middle of my workspace, I get an instant row of solid points to which I can safely attach the next line. All I need is to make the surface of the wire plastic friendly at my selected point, so the plastic sticks. Now we have made the jump into 3D. Now watch what happens to the line. Plastic shrinks and subtly tightens as it cools, which is another good reason to have the two points you are connecting as stable as possible. If the points can be dragged towards each other, the gravity takes over and you get a sag. Each of these new tight lines are now filled with stable points 
from which you can work further. If you are starting or ending on a single strand, it helps you if you support it a little with some tool, either at the launch or landing point as needed. If a row of points in space was so helpful, why not add two whole planes of supported points into that third dimension? A 3D pen needs a 3D work pad to help you think in 3D. Try this at home. A word of caution. This will work only on impeccably adhesive surfaces. If your surface has a mediocre adhesion, it will just fall off when the plastic strands start tightening. So while boxes are a good base for 3D workspace, make sure they are lined with something that will do the job. In my case, three sheets of plexiglass sprayed with matte acrylic coating. Bridging takes some practice and you should attempt it only after practicing on a flat surface for a bit. Your motion will have to go at just the right speed if your lines are to be straight. If you go very slow, the lines will sag and you can actually let them sag on purpose if you want to create curved shape in space. If you go too fast, you will stretch the plastic too thin to be stable and it may tear all together. Now, here is where the limitation uh, of the drawing in the air lies. You cannot make just any curved shape other than the sag you will get with gravity. You can't make a loop right here. The gravity just won't let you. If you want fancy loops and scrolls, you will have to make them on a solid surface with all points supported and then attach it to your design in some other way. But you don't need this fancy setup every time you make something. Every time you create any flat pictures and lift it up to vertical, you are in effect creating this kind of a 3D workspace setup. And then you continue drawing from the existing line onto the perpendicular plane and bridging in between them. So, here are a few baby bridging projects to help you practice. Let's start with bridging downwards, working with gravity, not against it. Obey gravity, it's the law. this downward bridging even to some round shapes. It doesn't have to have sharp corners. 
as long as you make your curves on a solid surface. Ready to try some diagonal bridging? will give you a feel for the speed of your particular 3D pen and when you need to stop it. Plus landing on the solid ground is way easier. like some more practice. 3D Pen Den Etsy's shop has some simple printable architectural templates for beginners that have a lot of downward bridging plus will give you a lot of tracing practice. So you get a feel for your specific pen's features. Thank you. 
So good luck with your bridging and stay tuned for more 3D pen techniques and projects.